Hi everyone, it's Nick from Bright Ideas Agency here. The wealth of tools available in Microsoft 365 means you can use it to add value to almost any business process. But a downside of this breadth is that often there's more than one way of achieving similar results. For those who are trying to work out which tool to use, this can be confusing. And there's no place where Microsoft 365 confuses average users like the options for file storage. A user may see three different places they can store and access files, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams. And without guidance, it may not be immediately clear which tool should be used for what purpose. So in this video, I'm gonna run over the similarities, differences, and intended use cases for them. So fundamentally, there are a lot more similarities than differences because at their root, both OneDrive and Teams file storage are built on top of SharePoint. This means that wherever a file is stored, you have a similar set of capabilities which are turned on by default, but might be tuned by your organization to your specific use case. These include the ability to share content, depending on how your environment is set up with colleagues, with outside users, and even with anyone anonymously using sharing links. The ability to open and edit documents, spreadsheets, or presentations directly from where they're stored, either in the Office web apps or using your Office desktop apps. The ability to co-author in real time with your colleagues or guests in your environment and use features like tagging in comments to seamlessly get others involved in your work. Use of version control with versioning for your documents so you can roll back unexpected changes or compare changes to understand what's been updated. The use of soft delete so if files are incorrectly deleted, you can get them back within a certain time frame. The ability to access and manipulate your files in other Microsoft services like Power Platform. Search indexing that allows you to easily find your content wherever it resides. Control under your established compliance and security policies for information protection and data loss prevention if they're set up in your tenant. So, if all those things are the same, why are there three different places to work with files? The answer really comes down to purpose and where you are in your workflow. So let's start with OneDrive. The vast majority of Microsoft 365 users, even if you don't use Teams or SharePoint sites, will have a provision OneDrive as it's deeply connected to many services as a location where your personal data is stored. By default, you're the only user with access to your OneDrive. And so it's location where personal files like those created by the OneDrive folder backup for your PC will be stored. You can think of OneDrive as your me location for file storage. Anything that's personal to you, drafts of documents, your personal OneNote notebooks, documents that contain information you don't want to share or anything similar should reside in your OneDrive. And it can also be the starting point for ad hoc collaboration. Say you have a document draft that you want to share with a couple of colleagues, you can do that from OneDrive. So now let's talk about Teams. Think about Teams as your we location. Teams is conceptualized around groups of colleagues or wider teams across different organizations that work together either on an ongoing basis or for a defined project. It's all to do with collaboration to get a particular job done as a group. When you create a Teams team, a SharePoint site and document library are provisioned alongside a set of other resources, and this is where files get stored. In your team, you have channels which are designed to break down your project into different components. For example, if you have a team that's launching a new product, you might have a marketing and product testing channel. And for each channel, you have a directory in your SharePoint site's document library for your files. At minimum, each team has a general channel and a corresponding general folder in the attached SharePoint document library. Unless you seek out the SharePoint interface, all of this is handled neatly inside Teams so that every channel you use, you see a files tab and files attached to that channel are displayed within it. By default, everyone who's a member of a team has access to all of the channels and all of the related content. There are ways to limit this, either using private channels or SharePoint permissions, but let's not worry about that here. Just think about the default experience. So even if someone is a marketing person and is part of the team to mainly use the marketing channel, 
they will have full access to the product testing channel and any files attached to it. This meets the goal of focusing on collaboration, but it means that teams must be set up with purpose in mind and thought about how to handle any sensitive content. So perhaps you have an HR team that uses Teams for their daily collaboration. They probably access files that contain information that is confidential, so not shared freely with other departments. But they're also responsible for creating content like policies that need to be accessible to everyone, but in a read-only state. In this case, the best solution is not just to add everyone else to the team, as this would give them access to read and edit everything. This is where we look to SharePoint. SharePoint stores your files pretty much exactly the same way as OneDrive or Teams, but it exposes many more options that you can use to fine tune how content is accessed and used. You could think of SharePoint as your they location, where you publish the results of your personal and collaborative work for broad consumption or for more tightly managed collaboration with wider audiences. Whereas Teams wraps your content in a set of tools that's designed to promote collaboration, things like chat and project planners. SharePoint wraps your content in tools that are designed for presentation and communication, allowing you to build internally facing websites, otherwise known as an intranet, to share information in a structured way with colleagues and business partners. SharePoint gives you tools to help surface information for your users. For example, you can group SharePoint sites into collections of hub sites. Perhaps you have a main HR hub site and then a dedicated benefits site within that hub. You can place web parts on these site pages to highlight things like recently added files. At all stages, what a user sees is within their security context. So if different departments only have access to a certain set of files, that is what they'll see. So which should you use? Well, understand that where you store files should depend far more on your organization's approach to structuring its environment than to any hard technical differences that exist between these storage platforms. Sure, there are differences, and many I haven't covered here, but that's mainly because consideration of technical differences with things like managed metadata or the integration of SharePoint syntax sit at a level of sophistication that requires an organizational approach that should include robust adoption training. If you use Teams in your environment, then for many users, relying on Teams for collaborative files and OneDrive for your personal storage will be all you need. Organizations should think hard about how to control the creation and life cycle of Teams to not end up with some unruly mess of too many Teams that ends up confusing everyone. And certainly in smaller businesses, considering using an org-wide team to offer access to files that's akin to having an on-premise or user shared drive can be a neat solution that minimizes learning curve and potential confusion. Even small businesses might benefit from using a more tightly controlled SharePoint site for certain types of document sharing, but it makes sense for this to be planned and managed through an organizational perspective. For end users, if the answer you come up with out of the uncertainty of where to store a file is to create a new SharePoint site, then in many cases you should probably think again. But what about those who already have an unruly mess of Teams, SharePoint sites and files all over Microsoft 365? Well, one of the shared features of each of these tools is the ubiquitous search capabilities. And in many day-to-day -day use cases, search can cut through all the concerns of confusing file storage locations by making it easy to find whatever you need, wherever it's stored. The need for complex folder hierarchies was born partly out of how terrible an experience it was to rely on search to find files in old on-premise shared drives. There was no useful out-of-the-box tool that allowed you to quickly find information unless you knew where it was or you could work it out because of the storage structure. This could lead to mass confusion and many work hours lost recreating content that already existed. The files stored in the cloud, whether it's your business files in Microsoft 365 or personal emails in Gmail, the capabilities that exist to index and then quickly search this information is leaps and bounds ahead of those old on-premises capabilities. So whereas we used to need to know where something was located, now it's far more practical to simply know what it is you're looking for and find it on that basis. 
Whether you're in OneDrive, Teams, or SharePoint, one of the most prominent features in front of you is the search box. And you can very quickly search not just within that service, but anywhere in Microsoft 365 your account has access to within your tenant. Going beyond this, the same search capability also offers contextual discovery. Using another app called Delve, you can see which files you have access to are being worked on by colleagues, which takes collaboration to new heights as it allows exploration of content. If you don't know where a file is located, but you know your boss was working on it, as long as your user account has access to that file, finding it might be as simple as looking at your boss's profile in Delve. So let's round out what we looked at today. OneDrive, Teams File Storage and SharePoint have far more similarities than differences in terms of technical capabilities from the end user perspective. Think of OneDrive as your me files, Teams as your we location, and SharePoint as where content is published when they need it. Focus on your organizational approach to organizing data in where you choose to host it, as each organization will use these tools slightly differently. And as an organization, put guardrails around Teams and SharePoint site creation and life cycles to minimize confusion. Focus less on learning where content is stored and more on using search and apps like Delve to find what you need. This can really cut through any file location confusion. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a better overview to understand the differences and the capabilities of these different places you can store your files. And if you take one thing away from this video, um, then try out using search a bit more um, as I found that it really helps to change my mindset from uh, having very complicated file storage structures um, to being able to find files far more easily wherever they are. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this about Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, then please do subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye-bye.